an introduction to the normal probability distribution. The sketch here shows a normal distribution with this uh, familiar bell-shaped curve and as we can see it's totally symmetrical about the, uh, the center here so the distribution is symmetrical about the mean and we have our continuous random variable on this axis here so this could represent um, uh, height, weights, time anything that's continuous in nature. So the distribution is bell-shaped. The total area under the curve is equal to 1. The curve is symmetrical and the shape of the curve depends on two parameters the population mean and the population variance. So now let's have a look at how you would get a curve like this starting with some real life data. Okay, so I'm going to start with some continuous data and this could be data on uh, the weights of students for instance. So if we took some students and measured their weights, the best way to record continuous data is in a frequency table like this where we have grouped the data. And the first thing that we notice here is that the highest frequency is in the center and as you move away from the center in both directions the frequencies drop off rapidly on each side. So this data has now been represented in this histogram we have our data along here, frequencies here. And here we can see that this bell-shaped curve is an approximate fit to the data. And this leads to the normal probability distribution where <coughs> this is now our probability density function and our continuous random variable goes along here with the population mean in the center. Now you may recall from uh, S1 last year when we did the binomial probability distribution that the number of successes x follows a binomial distribution there were two parameters that go here, n, the number of trials, and p, the probability of success. And we can use a similar method for summarizing a normal probability distribution. And it's like this. So x here is our continuous random variable. So that could be um, a height, weight, temperature, that kind of thing. So x follows a normal distribution, and the normal distribution depends on two population parameters, the population mean and the population variance. And uh, remember to get the notation correct. For example, if we're looking at the mean, the mean of a sample is given like this, but the population mean is this letter, this Greek letter, mu. Okay, so this is the sample mean and mu represents the population mean. And the same thing is true for a um, uh, standard deviation. The sample standard deviation is uh, capital S and the standard deviation for a population is lowercase sigma. Okay, that's lowercase sigma. This is uppercase sigma. And in statistics, you know, this one means to work out the sum of something. Okay. So lowercase sigma is the population standard deviation. And if we're looking at uh, variance, then the variance is just the standard deviation squared. So the sample variance is uh, capital S squared. 
and the population variance will be sigma squared. In this normal distribution, we know that the population mean is 150. There's the mean. And 225 is the population variance. And the population standard deviation is the square root of variance, so that's 15. Okay, another example. So in this one, population mean is 73, variance 82, and the standard deviation will be the square root of the variance, so 9.0623 significant figures. If you're trying to uh, use the standard deviation in a calculation somewhere, uh, avoid using rounded values. So for instance, what I've done here just now, um, if you had to use the standard deviation somewhere, just use it as the square root of 82. Uh, these values here, if you have a long value on your calculator and you want to store it in the calculator's memory, just do this. So shift, store, and then press one of these red letter keys like A, B, C, D, X, Y and so on. So I might want to store that in memory C for instance. So it's now stored in memory C. So to recall it, if I just press recall, C, yeah, there's the value in its exact form or in its decimal equivalent. And in this example here, the mean is 73, the variance is 5 squared, which is 25, and the standard deviation is the square root, which is uh, 5. Okay, if you have a look at these two normal distributions, they have the same variance, which means the shape of each curve here is the same. But as you can see, the mean differs. The mean there is 160, there's 160 there, we can see the normal distribution there is centered on the mean of 160. The mean in this normal distribution is 130, so it's centered on 130 there, and you can see that to get from this distribution to this one here, it's a simple transformation because the means lower, the graph shifts to the left. But the shape of the curve in both distributions is the same because the variance is the same. Okay, now if you compare this normal distribution with this one, the mean here is 160, the mean here is also 160, so the graph is centered on the mean. The variance this time is higher, which means this distribution is more spread out compared to this one. So the shape of this normal distribution differs to this one. Yeah, you can see that this one is more spread out than this one here, because this has a higher variance. Okay, to sketch a normal distribution, start with the mean, and in this case the mean is 160. Now the normal distribution goes to infinity. So this curve here never touches the uh, horizontal axis here. It's going closer, well it gets closer and closer to this axis, but never reaches it. Okay, so it goes to infinity. But when you sketch it, you have to sketch it within uh, reasonable limits and going three standard deviations away from the mean will give you a decent graph. So there's the mean. So one, two, three standard deviations to the left, and one, two, 
three standard deviations to the right. Okay, so from here I know the mean is 160, the variance is 10 squared, so that's 100, and the standard deviation is 10. So there's the mean. If I add a standard deviation and subtract one standard deviation, I've got this. So that's the mean plus a standard deviation, and that's the mean minus one standard deviation. And if I go two standard deviations from the mean in either direction, then that's 180, and this one's 140. So this is now the mean plus two standard deviations, and the mean minus two standard deviations. And if I go three standard deviations in each direction from the mean, so that's 190, 130, mean plus three standard deviations, and the mean minus three standard deviations. Okay, so that's a good way of coming up with uh, a scale if you're looking for some numbers to put here. Um, and our continuous random variable h in this case goes here. Okay, so this distribution may represent, let's say, the heights of students where the population of student heights has a mean of 160 centimetres and it has a standard deviation of 10 centimetres. Now, 68% of the uh, normal distribution lies within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, so that's 68%. So on here, if I was to do this, okay, that should be symmetrical. Uh, it doesn't look so great. Um, so that should be about 68% there. The mean plus one standard deviation, the mean one minus one standard deviation. That's 68% of the total distribution. 95% of the distribution lies within two standard deviations of the mean. So I'm now two standard deviations away from the mean there. So this region here represents 95% of the total probability. And 99.7% of the distribution lies within three standard deviations of the mean. So this time that's three standard deviations, three standard deviations from the mean. So this region here now is 99.7% up to here between these limits. Okay, 99.7%, which means 0.3% lies in these tails that will go to infinity in both directions.